So Jack, as you know, I'm a new beekeeper. So mm -hmm. I'm still learning so much about bees and the seasons. And one of the things I've noticed people asking us a lot about are queens and splits. And I've read a little bit about both of them, but I don't really know um, what it means for this time of year. Okay. Of three queen. Can you tell me? Sure, sure. We have queens available starting about the middle of April mm -hmm. and going through June, queens that come from California. The primary use that the early queens are put to is the production of splits. A split is when a beekeeper takes a strong colony, splits it into two halves, gives a new queen to one of the halves, his goal is to produce more colonies to produce honey the same year. It's also a, a good method of swarm control. The possible downside to doing it this way is that a lot of times the two splits are going to produce less honey than that strong hive would have produced all by itself. Mm -hmm. So some, some disadvantages and some advantages. What we do, we, we don't split many colonies here. Our approach is to make our splits or make our nukes later on. So a split is basically one hive mm -hmm. split into two. A nuke is a new colony produced from an existing colony. And the way we're doing that, we're doing it later. And our goal is not to have more honey producing colonies for the year. Our goal is to produce replacements, okay. um, nukes that are available for sale the following year. We think it's a great program. It's a way that beekeepers can produce their own replacements, a way for them to avoid having to purchase bees from, from other sources, mm -hmm. a way to hopefully incorporate some local genetics into the program and we really are enthusiastic about it. The, these, these, when, when, these nukes are called overwintered nukes mm -hmm. because they, we are producing them later. We'll typically start making them in June. We do not make them real, real strong. Our goal is to provide just enough resources, bees mm -hmm. and brood, to allow that colony to establish itself and to store enough honey to get through the winter. If these overwintered nukes are made too strong, or if they're made too early, what will happen is the bees are going to have a problem with their success, meaning they are going to expand so much, or they are going to produce so much honey that they get plugged up with honey, and then we'll see them swarm in oh. September. So that you want to build them with minimal resources, now, when I'm talking about resources, I'm basically talking about how many frames of brood we're putting into that nuke. Our overwinters, we are typically using one or one and a half frames of brood per, per nuke. By comparison, splits done in the spring, beekeepers are trying to use three, four, five frames of brood just so that can build up as quickly as possible and be ready to produce honey. The overwinters were typically using one and one and a half frames of brood, um, a frame of honey, and some pollen, and, and, and that's it. And then we're you know monitoring them closely as they build up. But the goal is to you know have colonies that have enough resources to get through the winter, but not so strong that they're gonna gonna swarm in the fall. In the fall, right? So exactly. I have a few questions. Sure. Um, so the big difference between a split and an overwinter nuke is really when you're splitting, spring versus late summer, fall. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of resources you're putting right. into the nuke or the split. Yeah. Um, and so then the overwinter nukes are going to be building up in the spring. So when we sell them, we're selling them with five frames with more brood than they had in the fall. Oh, she, yeah, absolutely. She's gone yeah. through the winter right. and then she starts producing. Right. So it would right. be just like built by one of the nukes from the south. Yeah, and in fact, I, we like to say that they're tested. And by tested, I mean that that queen has taken her colony through a winter. Mm -hmm. The ones where the queen was not optimal don't make through the winter. So they have already had one culling done 
by Mother Nature over the course of the winter. It's yeah. the survivors that are there to, to be sold in the following spring. One thing you said, I wanted to correct a little bit, you can't make them in the fall. You oh. really have to make them by early July. Oh, okay. and the reason for that, they have to have enough time to store enough honey and to draw enough comb to be ready to go through the winter. And there's a little bit of an exception to that. Our goal is to produce these without having to feed them. Okay. Certainly if you fed heavily, you could start them later, but we'd rather not do that if we can afford it. Could you do, I guess, I mean, could you take frames of honey and brood from uh, like a hive? Kind of do a split and introduce queens and then make those over winter dukes? Is that how that works? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And what we're doing, we are taking, that's, that's the other big difference between splits and these overwinter nukes we're producing. The splits, we're taking a productive hive, we're taking the best, splitting it and trying to make more productive hives. With the overwintered nukes, we're taking our mediocre colonies, and all that they are providing is some bees and brood and honey to get the colony started. It's going to be a completely new family whose genetics will be that of the new queen that we put in. Oh. So we're, we're, we're trying to improve our genetics yeah. by you know, taking marginal hives and using them to produce these nukes, knowing that those bees that were in there are going to be gone the following oh. spring. We're going to have oh. offspring of that queen. And these are queens we've raised here. Yeah, what yeah. we're doing here, the queens that we raise here, and we've got two or three other local beekeepers whose goals in queen pairing are similar to what ours are, and you know, we're using all of those queens. A good share of them, probably the majority are, are our own queens, but we're excited to be using other queens. We're getting queens from Andrew Munkras, beekeeper up in Cornwall, Vermont, Lemon Fair Honey Works, this is apiary, and then from Antoine Fahey mm -hmm. in Bennington, another good beekeeper. So we're excited about all the queens, Yay. and we work cooperatively. I've talked about, we've got some Russian queens that we used last year that we're pretty excited about, and we probably are going to be providing a few of those queens as breeders to our cooperating queen producers. So we're, nice. we're kind of heading towards the Russian line because they've got a lot of things going for them. In particular, they seem more so than other um, races of bees to manage varroa or at least partially control varroa levels without other treatments. Probably worth mentioning the other benefit of producing nukes and producing splits is that you are reducing the number of row in that colony. It's and exactly. Well, the brood cycle is, is, is not really broken as much as you would think. Okay. In other words, we're taking brood from one hive and putting it into a nuke or into a split. We're putting a laying queen in at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there really uh, is no interruption in the yeah. brood cycle. But the thing that is, if this hive has, say, 500 mites, we are going to split this in two. Each of these halves, be they nukes or splits, are going to have 250 yes. mites. So that because mites become a problem when the number gets to a certain level, you've backed them up. You've, yeah. you've, you've, you've gained some time. Keep in mind that particularly with making the overwinter nukes, we're using far less than half of the bees in the hive so that we aren't cutting in half. We might be getting one quarter of the mice wow. in each of those um, nukes that we produce from it. Right. And then the winter does break the root cycle. So yes, the right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. So interesting. I have one more question sure. um, just based on my understanding. Um, you said with the splits in particular, it's to create producing hives that year. Right. And so I, I started with two nukes last year. And yep. I mean, they certainly filled up their brood chambers and each put away about one super, but they mm -hmm. weren't productive. Mm -hmm. So if you were a beekeeper, I, I guess my question is, how much honey would you expect a split to produce? Is it the same as starting with a nuke um, in terms of building up 
a hive and getting started? Yeah, and that, that's a fair question. The, the, the real challenge is that all beekeeping is local, yeah. meaning that your area, even if you and I are five miles apart, your area might be much better than mine or mm -hmm. vice versa. Each year is different. Um, in general, I think an, a full-size overwintered hive will probably outproduce a, a split. Mm -hmm. I, I think there definitely are exceptions to that, and it depends on the area, it depends on you know how much competition there is mm -hmm. among bees for the resources that are there, and just how many resources yeah. are there, what the weather is like, so, so lots and lots of variables. Good years, you will see nukes or splits make a real nice honey crop. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, it's not unusual to see either of them produce, you know, 60 or 80 pounds of honey. Wow. Um, but, you know, every year is different. Last year, the later honey flows, we were pretty dry. Mm -hmm. And our later honey flows were pretty minimal. And, you know, the overall production was down. But really hard to generalize yeah. on what to, yeah. what to expect. I was just curious, like yeah. starting out. Um, right, right. And we offer classes both on overwintering nukes yep. and on splits, yep. correct? Yep, we do. Cool. Yay. And I'm sure there are lots of resources. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Yay. Thank you so much. Oh, my I've pleasure. had so many my questions, pleasure. and um, I think this is really great. So All right. Very good. My pleasure. Okay.